Hello, Waste fans, and welcome from all over the world to our new YouTube format here, the Pure Racing Pit Reporters from the NASCAR Wheel and Year Series. I'd like to introduce to you the Euro NASCAR PR manager, Gianluca Guilia, who is with me, and my name is Andre Wiegold. I'm an editor and reporter for the NASCAR Wheel and Year Series, and together we will take you behind the scenes of Europe's official NASCAR Series. The 2020 season is in the books. We crowned two champions and five trophy winners, and we have two of them here today. Um, both were racing in the Euro NASCAR 2 division. We have the champion, Vittorio Girelli from Italy, and we have the rookie trophy winner and the runner-up, Tobias Daunhauer from Germany. And both of them were just fantastic last season, and in the end, they were only separated by six points. Welcome, race fans. Uh, yes. Together, uh, Vittorio and Tobias were just outstanding. They won eight pole positions and eight races out of ten. Uh, the other two poles and the other two races went to their teammate, Martin Dubeck, making it a very special season for Hendrix Motorsport. In his second full-time season in Escar Wheel in Euro Series, Vittorio Girardi took the title with a pass in the last race of the season and finished with five wins eight top fives and nine top tens out of ten rounds. While Tobias grabbed the rookie trophy in his very first season in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series with three wins, eight top fives and nine top tens. So let's welcome Vittorio and Tobias. Hello, guys. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for joining us here today. We are close to Christmas. You see it in my, with my head. Um, <laughs> and it's nice that you have some time for us um, before those holidays. And it was a very busy season for you too. And I know I, I don't uh, I don't know if you can remember when we were on the grid in Valencia. I asked you both one question. You shared the data all the time. I asked you, are there, were there any secrets in the championship battle? And first to you, to you, Vittori, how was it this? battle with Tobias and how was it to have all the secrets open to your competitor? I go? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I have to say, Team Hendrix, we, we really don't have secrets. We work all together as a team. Maybe some, some drivers go in one direction and then some other drivers go in another direction. But then we always debrief and share everything together. To always find the optimal setup balance of the car and the, also for the strategy, the tire strategy and everything. So I have to team, yeah, in, in that sense, it's a very united team and we pushed each other a lot also to improve ourselves, the, the setup, the car, the balance. And in the end, we saw, I mean, we had all pole positions. So that is also. Uh, you know, a result of all the hard work we made as a team, I think. Tobias, same question to you. You were the runner-up in the 2020 season, in your rookie season. You had all the data from Vittorio, who had some experience before because he raced in 2019, and all the data uh, available for you. So how was it for you? Yeah, it was uh, just a nice feeling in the team. Uh, I think we still have a good relationship to each other after the whole season. And um, yeah, I could I could learn a lot from my teammate Loris, for sure. And uh, we had no secrets. And uh, like Vittorio said, we pushed each other through the limits. So just a nice season for me and uh, yeah, good feeling. Ah, you told me something right now. You said it was a hard season. It was a tough battle between you two. Um, the season ended in December. Did you have some time to rest during those finals? The Super Speed Week, it were eight races in four days. It was incredibly tight, the whole schedule. Did, were you able to rest? First to Vittorio, please. Okay, yeah. I mean, rest, yeah. I mean, uh, during the races, there wasn't so much time because we had a very packed Thursday with the two free practices, which are very important because you need to, with all the, you know, the, what you think about with the setup, all the things you want to try in the car, you have to, you know, bring it in those two sessions of half hour. So there's not much time to, you know, try stuff. And then it's quality straight away. So we managed to find a good direction in my case, but I wasn't still satisfied with the balance and with the car. And we really went on like improving, improving until the last race, the last final, where we, you know, 
found a very good balance, very good car. But obviously, when you have a short free practice, it's not easy. You need to be up to speed straight away. And uh, it, it wasn't hard. I mean, I really had to put uh, a lot in also myself in the driving and really uh, go on the limit to, to be up there, you know. Otherwise, it would have been much harder. But yeah, there wasn't uh, much time to rest. It was very, very intense uh, weekend for sure. Tobias, um, I saw some pictures of you in the grid and you looked so focused and you looked so um, engaged to all the stuff. And, and what were the last things you had in mind before the races started? It was all championship battle on the line. What were those thoughts you had in the car? Uh, just focusing on myself, uh, try to do no mistakes and uh, to do my best, the best, uh, best I could do. So, yeah, like Vittorio said, it was a tough season, but uh, yeah, I like it when there is not that much time between the races. So um, now two or three weeks after Valencia, I already miss racing, so the new season can start and it, yeah, it was a nice season. Uh, guys, the battle between you two was just phenomenal. For us race fans, uh, watching it, it was just unbelievable to see you two come down to the very last race of the season, the very last, yeah, the very last 15 laps of the season and battle it out. Um, now, Vittorio, what's the best quality of Tobias? And Tobias, what's the best quality of Vittorio? Okay. Well, Tobias is um, really fast in qualifying. So sometimes, like for me, I knew it was between me and him. It was a very tight battle. And also Martin was very up to speed in the last few races. So I think um, his qualifying pace was very good. Also his race pace. But I knew in qualifying, uh, you know, he could beat me. While in the race, it was more, you know, close because uh, maybe I have a bit more experience. He's still very fast, but, you know, in the races, everything can happen. But in qualifying, I really had to, you know, concentrate more, 100%, maybe even more than the 100% to try to beat him. It was very, very tight. And sometimes I was more happy to get, like, pole position, respect to win the race because... It was so intense that sometimes I was, you know, more happier to start in the front. While other races, in, in the race, it's an all other story. You know, it's long race, anything can happen. And, uh, you know, safety cars, uh, uh, starts, restarts. I love restarts. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, his, his good point for sure is the qualifying speed, I think. Uh, we saw that you love restarts. That restart in, <laughs> in final. Well, you were pretty fast to come up from ninth and then pr put pressure on Tobias. Tobias, up to you. Yeah, Vittorio is a very focused driver as well. So um, we saw each other before the races in our preparations. And I think we, are, we have still uh, nearly the same uh, preparation before the races. So, yeah, he's a good racing driver. He has a good, uh, very good pace in the races and for sure a lot of experience. So, yeah, like I said, it was uh, just a nice battle between us. Absolutely. Um, well, well we, we, we left uh, Valencia with a clear impression about 2020, and that was Hendrix Motorsport dominating, dominating Euron Escar 2 with three drivers, sweeping all podiums, Oh, at some point, we had all three of you on the podium. Uh, what was, and it's something really never happened in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. Never. It's a unicorn in, in the history of the series. So, what do you think was the key to this dominance, guys? Well, as I said before, uh, the teamwork makes a big difference. Also, I have to say, uh, we are all three of us, we are very good drivers. I mean, uh, we are all good drivers so when you have a good driver and a good car then obviously the results come it's not it doesn't finish there because normally you even have to have all the background like the teamwork sharing all the setups sharing all the data every every session we did a little debrief before qualifying to choose which direction we we should go 
we, we could we could try different stuff between the cars and then put it all together so i think um, also the the experience we had uh, from our elite one drivers which are two very fast driver and uh, that helped us a lot i think so we managed to build you know a good atmosphere a quick atmosphere because the cars were always quick and also the the mechanics they are very good on focus all weekend all the time and these cars it can happen that they break down i mean i had an engine failure in the race one double points so i mean you have to keep it in mind until then i, have, I had been lucky not to have failures but then i had it in the final which was double points so it can always happen but when you maximize all the uh, you know the changing the pieces everything the teamwork then you reduce the the, the possibility so i think team hendrix is for sure one of the top teams in this in this series to be honest, do you agree what? yeah uh, I, I would say the same uh, we had just a nice atmosphere a nice feeling in the team for for me as a racing driver it felt like one big family and uh, no secrets and um, yeah for sure you as a racing driver can do your best but without a good car you are not able to win so it's a it's a big uh, big achievement from the team and um, from our racing drivers as well we had a big highlight for the team the one two three finish um, but now to your personal ones and let's make this one quick you have one Highest point and one lowest point of the season, you can tell us. Just one. Vittorio, you first. The highest point and the lowest point of the 2020 season. Well, it's not so hard question, I think. <laughs> lowest <laughs> for sure is the final one and highest is the final two. Yeah, basically on, on Saturday in the final one, I had a good start. We were there battling, then Tobias uh, passed me again in turn two. But then I, I felt something weird some r r strange noises and i was like saying no no please don't leave me now don't abandon me and then i started to have loss of power i uh, started to also have a bit of shift issues and uh, then it was going down and down and down everyone passed me i was like staying there i wanted to stay alive maybe to get a tenth or an eighth you know to get some points because it's still some points even but then on lap, I think 12, the, the engine just opened and the, uh, the wheels locked and I had to stop the car, I had to park the car. Yeah, it was a very, very sad moment. In the car, I was already calculating how many points behind I was in that moment. And then uh, I knew, I mean, it would have been like nearly impossible to, you know, to catch up because he had a very Tobias had a very very fast pace in race one so with that pace starting from Paul and me starting from 10th or 9th it would have been you know easy for sure but um, when I woke up the morning I said I mean I, I nearly like didn't sleep that night I had like one hour sleep in all the night because you know all the work done all the hard work, the races I won in Croatia and the, both races in Spain also, I put a lot of myself and it was all gone uh, in one race because from being leading to from with 26 points, I was then behind with eight and I was starting, you know, half grid, which is always messy with these cars. It's always a bit of... So I really said, um, I mean, I have nothing to lose. I don't, uh, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't be happy to be second. So I'll just go for it, look forward without thinking of yesterday and go for it. I woke up very determined, I have to say, very angry also, but not with someone in particular, just with, you know, with what happened with the situation. And I managed to, to like transform it in concentration for, for the race. And I have to say, uh, I also saw again my data of the race two, of the final two, I mean, and uh, I've never been like, uh, I, never, I did like uh, seven or eight lap times, like same lap, and within one tenth. 
So, I mean, I was very, very focused. I put really everything in there. And um, also in race two, I was also lucky in the start not to, you know, get in accidents. I was quickly up to fourth position after one, one, one lap. So a lot of situations, you know, came to me, but, you know, you have to keep in mind that it can motorsports. I mean, it can take off, but it also can give you. So you always have to be there, I think, and give it your role in any situation. Try to maximize what you have in that moment. And for me, it worked. So, yeah, I was very happy. Tobias, now to you. Um, I guess the lowest point is the last race and the highest point, maybe Vallelunga? Yeah, exactly. For me, it's very easy to decide. Uh, first race weekend in Vallelunga, it was uh, definitely my highest point in the season. First first time in Esca and uh, I could reach a, a double double victory. So just an amazing feeling. And yeah, for sure, the last race in Spain, uh, it uh, was my lowest point. I lost the championship in the in the last race of the season, the overall championship. But yeah, still happy with the rookie championship and uh, second place in the overall standings. Up to the next question. And we start with you, Tobias, because it was a complete new environment you were in 2020. And you have been to a lot of new tracks in your life. So what was your favorite track in the 2020 season and why? Uh, for me, it's Vallunga now. <laughs> uh, first time uh, I was on the track, so every track uh, was new for me uh, in this season. So I had to, to learn a lot uh, to get a good feeling in the car. But yeah, for sure, like I said, uh, Vallunga, I think it's now my favorite track. <laughs> But why? Why? Is it the track or is it the successes you had? I think both. Bo uh, Vallunga is a very technical track. It's not uh, not easy for the drivers. And uh, when we had there the first race of the season, it also was uh, very uh, high, uh, hot, tem hot temperatures in the car and outside. So hard conditions for the drivers and for the material as well. So, yeah, it was a nice race weekend and uh, also a nice track for me. Okay, now to Vittorio. You have a lot of experience and you have been to several tracks in Europe, but 2020, your favorite track? Okay, for this year... Yeah, for sure. I love Vallelunga also because it's also my home track. I mean, I had a bit of issues in the first race of the season, so we we couldn't have, you know, a nice and fair battle with Tobias. But uh, yeah, he was also very fast in that race. So uh, yeah, it would have been also hard to beat him, I have to say. But uh, this year, I loved the Croatia. It was amazing. I mean, all fast, you know, fast corners, uh, high speed, uh, um, it remembered me to a little experience I had in the US with the Indy Lights I had in, back in 2014. Uh, very bumpy, high speed. Uh, I mean, um, it remembered me of, of those circuits, you know, Alabama, very high stuff, high speed stuff. And yeah, I loved Croatia. Also, I like Rijeka, the city is very nice. And uh, yeah, I'm happy we will be back next year. Yeah, I haven't been able to come to uh, Grobnik and everybody's telling me it's just fantastic. So um, I'm a little bit yeah. uh, frustrated that I wasn't there. But in 2021, I will be there for sure. Um, and that's one thing I want to talk with you about. Um, I had the problem not to come to Grobnik because of COVID-19. You had also a lot of challenges in this season due to COVID. Tobias, for you, what was the biggest one? Yeah, it was a tough season, I think, for all of us. Um, for me, it's uh, difficult because I work as a mechatronic uh, as well, beside the racing. So after the last uh, two or three race weekends, I think I had to go in quarantine for one week. I take all my, my holidays uh, for, for racing this year. So, yeah, tough season, but um, with the success we achieved, uh, I'm still happy and uh, still the right decision for me. <laughs> and for you, Vittorio, the biggest challenge? Yeah, I mean... It was very hard because uh, I work in an event company in Rome. And uh, I mean, as you know, the events were all closed. So it was hard, I mean, uh, not to have, you know, uh, your job, your normal daily job. So I couldn't even see, I didn't even want to see, you know, friends, uh, new people, because I was always, you know, with the group, my family, my girlfriend and my brother and the uh, maybe one friend, we, we saw only each other. So maybe, yeah, not seeing so many people, 
you know, the normal life routine. Uh, I missed it a bit, but I have to say, uh, I mean, you guys, uh, the organization of NASCAR, Gianluca, Andre, you, Jerome, Anne, you did a very amazing job to, to make it happen. I mean, I know it would not have been easy, but uh, you really did the, the maximum. And I think in the end, we gave good the show to our fans and that's what counts. I mean, all the series, the NASCAR series, is, uh, I mean, it's, it, it is born for the fans. I remember last year we had nearly 20,000, maybe even more people in Brands Hatch. It was crazy. Like queues of kilometers of people coming at the races. And that's what's NASCAR. I mean, bringing families to the circuits and sharing our passion with, you know, uh, people from all around Europe. And uh, to make it happen, even if we didn't have the public, it was, you know, maximum effort. So, yeah, congratulations to you guys also. Thank you so much. And you have something, you said something that's very important, the fans. And I like it how um, Gianluca wrote it on our script. Yes, we have a little bit of a plan here. And he said, he wrote, let's put a smile on our fans' faces. For you, Vittorio, first, what's the funniest story of the 2020 season on or off track? Hmm, I have to think about it. The <laughs> uh, funniest, uh, I mean, this year was really intense. So, uh, probably the best part was uh, in the end of the season we, when I won the championship. You know, with our mechanics in the podium, uh, champagne shower, that was very nice moment. But um, it, in the in the in the box, in the, the it was very intense. We were very concentrated, so we were very focused. We didn't have a lot of you know uh, laughing around after the race. Yes, but before it was really really intense. So yeah, I have a funny one about you. I was. Uh, you see, you see these pictures. Uh, yes, the pictures we took in in your uh, in the pit lane after the podium. Yeah. yeah, I'm the I'm the little pink dot in between the two panels, trying oh, to yeah. hold that win. <laughs> True, you were holding. <laughs> yeah, you were holding panels from the wind. I so I remember. Yeah, yeah. that was funny. Well, I, I almost died, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tobias? Uh, it's, it's difficult to say one thing, but uh, I think there are still uh, still some some news or some things which uh, don't know the fans uh, or which, which, which doesn't see the fans the whole season on, on TV screen. So, for example, in Grobnik in Croatia, I had no power steering the whole race on from the beginning. So it was difficult. It was a very hard and tough race for me, but I could manage to do third place, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, some news which uh, which only know the racing drivers and the team. <laughs> uh, well, now we're in winter. We just finished the season, and it's really strange because we normally end in we end it in in October. Now it's December. It's Christmas. It's all in a rush. Uh, we are, we'll be back on track mid April. Remember, guys. Uh, we start in Valencia mid-April with the 2021 season of the NASCAR Wheel and Cross Series. Uh, what's the plan for the off-season? What's your plan for the off-season apart from, well, uh, social distancing holidays? Um, and what's next for 2021? Do you already know? Do you already have plans working on something? Yes, first. Yeah, for sure. The next uh, next days when there's Christmas time, I will enjoy the time with my family and uh, calm a bit down and then when the new year starts i try to get best prepared for the for the new season try uh, to do uh, physical training uh, some sim races for example and um, yeah in the new season i will compete in the nesca U uh, euro series as well um, try to do uh, good, good results and yeah uh, my my aim is uh, to to start a racing career in nesca in america and I try to get closer to uh, to this target. You already know if it will be your NASCAR Pro or your NASCAR 2? Uh, I'm not sure in the moment. Uh, I think I have to discuss with my team and then uh, we have to to uh, do the best decision. <laughs> we can start putting together a draft. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> he confirmed. 
it's done uh, as the oil again supporting you yeah for sure i'm i'm very happy that i have a, a good had a that i had a good team uh, this year with uh, hendrix motorsport without my sponsors the season wouldn't be possible so many thanks to at oil and uh, to all my other sponsors and hopefully we we'll, we will we can create a good package for the next season and uh, we can compete many races we tell you we know for sure that you cannot race in your NASCAR car too that's it <laughs> yeah, i won't what's the plan yeah i mean i'm so uh, planning uh, i i hope to you know have a good car good atmosphere to you know go and win races so I mean, we saw the speed was there uh, in my qualifying with the lap times, but you know, it's, uh, we are like three, four, five battling in our NASCAR too, but there is like 15 drivers, so it's much more tight. I know it's hard, but I'm ready. Also, I'm doing physical training to arrive spot on. Also, started a bit of a diet before Christmas, so you know, the two days of Christmas I can push hard. And uh, <laughs> yeah, for the rest, I mean, uh, my 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 focus is on next season. I saw the calendar; the tracks uh, are all nice. I love them, so I'm really looking forward to you know trying to already quite soon find a good deal, so I can ma manage you know to to focus with the team, start knowing the team. Maybe do some testing if we can uh, open, you know, if if, if we, they open us up because we're still locked down now. So we see how the situation evolves. And yeah, I also have a little simulator in my office and uh, train a little bit and uh, do some races on the uh, Assetto Corsa and the racing just for fun. So yeah, this is the, the plan. We'll see how it evolves. For sure, I'm um, getting ready for next year to be in top top shape. So we can already we can already book them for the Euro NASCAR yeah. Esports Series. But oh. <laughs> yeah, you should, you should run it up again, another like short one maybe. You know, I have my new I have my new simulator setup, which is all cool now. And yeah, you should uh, you should do it. Not. Not in <laughs> not during the week, not during the week, because I have also work, but maybe in the evenings we can try something, and so it would be cool for sure. I will, uh, I will join you on the, on the uh, practice servers to show you how to not race. <laughs> in the races I will go out again and uh, commentate and just talk about what you're doing and not doing it by myself very, very bad. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, let's wrap it up with the last question. Uh, you all said that you missed the fans, and we all miss the fans this season. We really hope to be able to welcome back all our thousands and thousands of fans at the track uh, next season. But I was wondering, what would be the first thing you say to the first kid coming to you for an autograph? Who's going first? No one. <laughs> Sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, what would you ask? What would you say uh, to the very first fan coming to you for for an autograph in 2021 when we will be allowed to have public again, finally, hopefully? Well, it would be for sure a nice a nice moment. I will give like 20 postcards and do hundred <laughs> autographs. Finally, what? It was hard because eh? NASCAR with no public is, is, uh, is you know, is uh, like football without a soccer ball. So it's, it's crazy. But yeah, I mean, we still made it happen. We raced, we did uh, what we love to do. So I'm very grateful to you guys for the organization and uh, very happy also for my result. It was a good year and uh, hopefully it will be even better next year. Tobias? Yeah, I would, I would say I'm very happy to see you at the racetrack. So um, I know um, many fans are supporting us in front of the TV on the live stream, but for sure it's not the same when you have fans uh, on the racetrack um, and uh, you can uh, see uh, see all the fans in reality. So hopefully uh, the fans are allowed in the next season from the beginning on, and we will have some nice moments 
uh, on the racetrack and beside the racetrack. Thank you very much for your time, guys. And thank you, race fans, for uh, for watching us. And re uh, stay tuned on the Euronescar YouTube channel for more from the racing pit reporters. From myself and Andre Wiegold. Yes, thank you so much. Grazie mille, Vittorio. Vielen Dank, Tobias. And follow those guys on social media. We have the uh, social tags in the in the video. You saw them already. Vittorio Girelli and Tobias Downhauer. They are on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. And also follow the Euronasca social media profiles to not miss any information ahead of the 2021 season. And we heard something about um plans for your nasca esports series again maybe there will be something coming because we took some notes today so stay tuned thank you so much for joining us and have a good day thanks for having me see you guys and remember to leave a comment below guys subscribe and hit the bell to stay wish tuned you, with everything you wish you a very nice christmas to all the fans watching and to you too and Tobias, also your family, uh, have a good time, rest, and we, we carry on battling next year. Thanks. Have See a good time. Bye-bye. See you. Guys. Bye -bye. See you.